Hi, I'm Tom Scarpello of Revology Cars, and this is car number 118, a 1967 Mustang GTA 2 plus 2 Fastback in candy apple red with Porsche sand beige and black Napa leather interior. Today I'm going to take you on a walk around of this car and we're going to go for a drive. Let's get started. All right, 1967 Mustang GTA. So 1967 was a big year for Mustang. Mustang had created a segment selling over 1 million units in its first two and a half years in existence and was facing new competition and Ford had to respond. And so they did. For 1967, the Mustang got wider, got longer. It looked more aggressive and muscular. The uh, package featured front fog lamps, disc brakes in the front, some other trim elements, you know, the white stripe down the rocker panel, the badging. And if you chose an automatic transmission, you got the GTA badge. Uh, like the original, we have fog lights in the grill. The 67 horse and corral is, is a bit deeper, um, similar to the 65 in some ways, but obviously uh, a different shape to match the, the different shape of the 67 body. Um, we used the turn signal hood, which was part of the exterior decor group back in 1967. At the side, the, this car is equipped with the st uh, styled aluminum wheel with the blue center cap. The blue center cap was uh, standard on the styled steel wheel in 1967. Previously, it was a red center cap. Uh, the factory finish on the wheel insert was Argent. Uh, this client has chosen the black insert as a special order option. So for 1967, there were two interior options, the standard and the deluxe. And we've designed our interior based on the deluxe interior, which featured uh, aluminum trim on the dash and the console. Um, obviously, all the panels are trimmed in leather. This is a Porsche sand beige leather and this is a Porsche black Napa leather. We, uh, the sand beige was actually a new item the client suggested and we liked it and so we're making it a regular production option. So one of the great things about buying a Revology Mustang is you can personalize it. You can choose the color and trim and options that you want and really make it your own. Now, there are some limitations to that, obviously. You know, this is a sophisticated platform. You know, it's not a 60s car. We have a modern electrical architecture. It's just not feasible to really offer a wide range of uh, configurations. Now, back in the 60s, I mean, you could order, geez, wow, millions of different combinations because you know, the options were basically standalone. You could create almost like a unicorn car back in the 60s if you just check off the option boxes in a certain way. So that's all changed nowadays. And you know, one in the 1970s when the Japanese started importing you know, large volumes of cars to the US, you know, they, they had a much longer lead time. So they weren't able to turn around orders quickly. They had to build cars, put them on a boat, ship them. What they did was start to package cars in popular option configurations. And that way they could build you know, these popular configurations and ship them over even though they weren't already, uh, there wasn't an order already placed for them. But because they were popular combinations, it really wasn't an issue. And, you know, that the industry discovered that the consumer accepted that. Also, cars became a lot more complex. And, you know, back in the 60s, they were basically mechanical. It, and, and sort of everything was kind of independent and you could mix and match but now everything is controlled electronically everything is integrated 
there's an electronic implication for any change and therefore it just exponentially increases the amount of you know engineering resource required to make any change so you know that's why we have a, a fairly limited number of configurations that we are able to offer we do think that because building it your way is a really important part of the experience is we offer a wide range of choices in uh, interior trim and uh, colors and things like that uh, but um, functionally you can't really change the a and gta of course which this car has although this is quite a different automatic than the one that the original was equipped with the a probably should have stood for anemic because those old slush boxes just robbed so much performance that any self-respecting car enthusiast wouldn't be caught dead driving an automatic car like a real car person <clears throat> would be always driving a manual and i i'm a manual guy i love shifting but i gotta say the 10 r80 is a sweet transmission it just it bangs off shifts like an f1 car almost um it's just really cool so like for example and it's lights out and away we go